The optional class contains multiple methods like map, filter, flat map, or else, which are useful for functional programming. In this video, we will explore the functional and fluent style of programming with Java Optional. If you are not aware of the basics of Java Optional class, you can click on the link on the upper right corner of your screen to watch my video on Java Optional's basics, and then come back to this video. I will give a brief overview of Java Optionals. On the screen, you see a simple example of a user record which has the following data attributes, user ID, name, address, and whether the user is the CEO. The address variable itself is another record which has an address line string and a zip code. Here's how the optional class can be used in our code. Consider that you are probably writing a reusable code which can be used by multiple developers, probably something like a library. In the example, you see that the users class has a method called getUser, which returns an optional of type user, indicating to the caller that the return type of the user can be null. Note that the optional value itself must never be null when you return it. How does the caller use this API? Here's one way. The caller of the users.getUser method uses the isPresent method of optional to check if a valid value is available, and if so, will process the user. And then of course, use the get method of the optional to retrieve the actual name. The end benefit of using the optional class is that the caller is forced to think about handling the null return value. This prevents a null pointer exception and makes the code robust. In Spirit, the idea is very similar to throwing a checked exception, which also forces the caller to handle that exception. But here I should caution you, the recommendation by Java engineers is to return Java optional when writing libraries which will be consumed by many developers. It's definitely not the intention to design every method call to return an optional where a null can be returned. As an example, libraries like Java Streams API return Java optional in many places, and so do Spring Boot libraries. Basically, we have talked about how Java optional can be used in an imperative style development. But let's now start looking at a more interesting case where we consume an optional in a functional style. Optional class provides a method called if present, where the programmer can provide a lambda expression a consumer in this case, to handle the contain object. On the screen, you can see the code is calling the if present method and passes the consumer to handle the contained user object. Here, a lambda expression is passed for a consumer. However, if variable o user is an empty optional, the consumer will not be invoked. In other words, it's a functional style of using the classic Java if statement. The method signature of if present is also shown, which takes a consumer interface as input. As part of the typical Lambda programming, we can also pass a method reference instead of a Lambda expression. This makes the code more readable. In the example here, you can see that the method reference main colon colon handle user is passed as a parameter so that the user handler code is isolated to a different method. That's a more readable design. But what if the caller wants to use the classic if then else statement? The caller wants to do something as part of the else. That's possible by using the method if present or else method. Here's an example. If a user is available, then the first parameter which is a method reference is invoked. Otherwise, the second parameter, which is a lambda function representing a runnable is called. This method, if present or else, is the functional equivalent of the classic if then else as applied to the optional object. Now, apart from these, the optional class also has a number of or else methods which are useful to express what needs to be done when the optional is empty. 
Here's an example of using the or else method. Here the user variable is assigned the contained value in o user if it is available. Otherwise, the constant default underscore user is assigned to it. Now this method is a functional equivalent to the Elvis operator, which we find in other languages like Groovy. But what if the default user is not as simple as a constant, but needs to be retrieved as part of a different logic? Optional class has the or else get method, which can be used. Now this is similar to or else method with the exception that when the optional o user is empty, the supplier lambda function is called, which uses some internal logic to retrieve the default user. Now there is also a similar or method in optional, which also uses a supplier, but it supplies an optional of a user instead of the user. That's a subtle difference. Now sometimes the user simply wants to throw an exception if the optional is empty. What can we do about that? We can use the or else throw method to return the user if available, otherwise simply throw the default no such element exception exception. But what if you want to throw a customized exception and not a no such element exception? Can we do that? We can use an overloaded method of or else throw where we pass a lambda expression as the parameter. And inside the lambda expression, we can throw whatever exception we want. It's basically a supplier of exceptions. But it gets even better from here. There are a number of methods in optional which are useful for a fluent style development. Such methods return back another optional object so that more methods can be called on it and thus creating a chain of methods. Without optionals, we cannot do fluent style development because a return null would practically end that chain. The fluent style of programming uses method chaining to express and implement a particular use case. We see this kind of programming when using Java streams, for example. The pseudocode for such a style looks something like the following on the screen and it's easy to recognize this style. Now there are many methods in optional like filter, map, flat map, which can be used for fluent style development. The stream class also has similar methods. These methods are similar in spirit to the streams methods, but operate on the optional value. Let's take a look at each one of them. The map method translates the optional of one type to an optional of another type. Now look at the code on the screen, which extracts the name of the user in an imperative style. That's using a typical if statement. In the code on the screen, we are getting the user object for the user ID UID and then extracting the name of that user. The variable name can be either null or a valid string. In the optional world, the perfect way to represent it is an optional string. So basically our real requirement is to convert from optional of a user object to an optional of string, which represents the name. The map method does that for us, as we show on the screen by using a fluent style. As you see, we can call the map method on the optional. The map method takes in a function, which takes a user object and returns the user name. The method reference user colon colon name is passed to represent that function. So here we used a much more fluent API to extract the name and the end result is quite pleasing to the eye. Let's now change the requirement a bit to say that we should only get a valid name if the user is the CEO of the company. Remember we have a flag in the user object which represents whether the user is a CEO or not. Using the imperative style, the method code would look something like what is shown on the screen. Here we set the name only if the user is the CEO. So we need an additional check to test for that by using the method user.ceo, which will return true or false. The problem with this imperative style programming is that there are way too many cascading if statements, 
leading to undesirable code. We can replace that code by a nice fluent combination of filter and map as follows. Here you see that after getting the optional user object, filter method can check if the user is a CEO. The filter method takes a predicate and if at runtime this predicate returns true, then the filter returns the optional user object again. Otherwise, it will return an empty option. The next step is to call the map method which will return an optional string representing the username. If you call the map method on an empty optional, it will simply return back an empty optional. You can now begin to see that there is a distinct improvement in the readability of the code using the fluent style of development. For sure, the fluent style of programming does require some practice to get used to. Let's now talk about the flat map method, which is a variation of the map method. To appreciate this method, let's change the use case a bit. Let's say we would like to extract the zip code of the user instead of the username. So our first attempt in an imperative world would be to code as shown on the screen. Notice that the zip is actually within the address, which is within the user. Now this code works, but it's less than ideal for obvious reasons. There are too many if statements. We already know one way to eliminate the cascading if statements. That's by using the map method as we see on the screen. Here we use the first map to extract the address and then the second map to extract the zip. But what if we change the design of both user and address by adding two methods, get address and get zip, which returns the optional types. This is just to show how to deal with optionals. So in the record user, you have a get address. Now the record also has an address method, which just simply returns an address, but the get address would return an optional address. I just added it to showcase the flat map method. Same with the address record. If a function which returns an optional type is passed to a map method, then the return result will be an optional of an optional type. The use of flat map will flatten the cascading optionals to just optional type and makes it easier to work with it. This is very similar to the flat map on the stream where you have a stream of stream which is being flattened to a stream. So if we were to use the get address and the get zip methods instead of the address and the zip methods in our fluent pipeline, we would end up with the following code. Notice the use of flat map methods. Method reference user colon colon get address returns an optional address but flat map would simply return the optional address. Whereas map would have returned optional of an optional address. Bottom line, flat map should be used when the function passed to it returns an optional. Otherwise use simply map. Final thoughts, optional also has a stream method which creates a stream of zero or one value. If the optional is empty, then it will return a stream of zero elements. If the optional has a valid value, then it will return a stream of one element. From this point, any of the available stream methods can then be used to manipulate the stream in the functional style. I'll probably create a video to explain when the stream method can be used. Let me know in the comment section if you would be interested in knowing more. In summary, Though optional can be used in its simplest form, it also has a number of methods which helps the developers in writing functional and fluent style code. This can lead to more concise, readable, and robust code in a lot of use cases. If you like this video, give a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more such material.